Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. I've been wanting to add a deckled edge to the pages of my book projects, but I am new to it and I've never tried it before. I've seen it. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a raw rough edge on the pages of a book. It can give kind of a handmade feel, but also it is another alternative if you don't want to worry about cutting the edges of your pages really smooth. It's great for watercolor paper and I just like the overall look. So I'm going to explore some ways on how to give this effect to paper and I'm going to take you along with me in my process. So let's get into it. First off, thanks to all of you who shared your ideas and methods for making a deckled edge on my community page, Instagram, Twitter. I learned a lot from your comments and I actually used some of your suggestions in this video. To share an example of what this looks like in a book, I have this beautiful book that was sent to me from Yen from Le Cargo, I think you say it. I'll link her shop down below. She makes her own books and she included a deckled edge in this one. I like how the rough edges kind of disguise the signatures so you don't have to trim them all flush and smooth, especially when you have a lot of pages that might be difficult to trim. And it doesn't bother me that the top and bottom of the pages aren't deckled, though you can do that if you choose. Now let's jump into the most common methods. Odds are your paper is already cut to a size, so you just want to trim the edge of it, and the most common way to do that is with a metal ruler. And you want to make sure to have the cork side up so you can pull the paper on the sharper flat edge. I'll show you what this looks like on the more common weights of paper and then work my way up to the thicker paper. You want to start out with a half inch or less depending on what you're comfortable with pulling off the page and make sure to factor that into the size of your book. Press down the ruler and pull the paper towards you toward the metal edge. You can also be a little bit more loose with it if you want a more rough texture. And there you have it. Now for the thicker paper, like watercolor or cotton, it's easier to tear it when it's already scored. So you can do this by bending it along the roller and then tearing it along the edge just like we did before. Another option if you want a more soft feathered look Dip a paintbrush or q-tip in water and run it along the folded edge. And then try pulling it away from you, and this will kind of pull out the fibers, making it look softer. This was done on 90 pound watercolor paper, but if you have something thicker, it might be easier to score it with a bone folder first. I did this edge without any water and just pulled it away making the fibers kind of come out for that softer edge. If it's really thick paper, you can put water on both sides of the score line and tear off the edge with or without a roller, and you can do it on the tabletop or on the edge of the table. And for thick paper, I found it easier to fold the pages after I've done the edges. I recommend using the water method only on the thicker paper, otherwise it will warp and wrinkle it, unless you are going for that distressed look. You can also try this on watercolor sheets, which can be found at the craft store, which sometimes is a limited supply and not always protected from footprints, or a fine art store where it's a bit more expensive, but there is a variety of weights and it's usually more protected in drawers. They usually already come with a deckled edge, so that makes it even easier to make one all around your pages. You also get to have more control over the grain of your pages, and I talk more about this in my how to prevent warping video. Basically, you always want the grain of your paper going the same direction as the spine of your book. You don't always get to control it, but when you do, it is a good thing because then your book won't warp as much. I divided my sheet so that the folds of the pages would go in the same direction as the grain. And basically folded the sheet in half multiple times until I got eight sections. And to cut apart all of those sections, I did the water brush technique, adding water to the fold and then ripping the sections apart to make the deckled edge. I find it easier to fold it, but you could also do this without folding it with just a ruler or on the edge of a table.
Usually the more textured the paper, the more fibers it has to show on the edge if you want that soft look, and I think it adds a really nice touch to the edge of any watercolor paper. And now I can fold each of these in half to make signatures. I also found some alternative methods that I thought were worth mentioning. There are some tools out there that can give you a different look to your edge if you're going for something like that. Some of them have more uniform patterns than others and I'm going for more of an inconsistent, natural look. And I decided to try out this dual edge ripper in the original pattern because it looks more like a natural ripped edge. This one has a really textured side and then a less textured side. It's also really long so it can work well with larger sheets. I'm testing it out on 60 pound drawing paper here and I found it really easy to use. This is laser cut so it's kind of sharp on the bottom and it actually helps tear your paper easier. Here is the less rough side and I like that both patterns have an inconsistent texture that way it looks more natural. And here is the more rough side with larger texture. I also like that it's clear so you can see what the pattern is going to look like on your paper before you tear it. With this option, you wouldn't have to wet the areas of really thick paper to get that fibrous look. And here I'm trimming 140 pound watercolor paper. But it does give you more of a sharp textured edge rather than a soft feathery textured edge. Also, thanks to those who suggested this in the comments, I read some of you actually use this and I'm glad I tried it out. Something else that was suggested was a butter knife and I tried that out. If you don't have a metal ruler on hand, I think this might be a good option, but it does take a little bit longer than a ruler would. Or at least with me it does, but it can give you an interesting texture, maybe a more rounded, slightly jagged texture if you're using it like I am. Nonetheless, it is an option. There are also ways to de-stress the edges, making your paper look like it's been aged. If that's the look you're going for, you can try some of these tools, and I'll link these down below as well. But if you don't have one of these, a pair of scissors can do a very similar texture. To be honest, I don't really like the feeling of this. It's almost like nails on a chalkboard to me if it's scraping in the right way. But if you're going for a distressed, deckled edge, you could try it. There's also some household items that have a rough edge you could try. Sandpaper, the edge of a tape dispenser. You can run these along the edge of your paper as much as you want or as little as you want in different areas to get a more distressed, deckled edge. I don't think the distressed look would be my go-to, but if I was doing a themed book, which I've done in the past, I will link these down below, you can see how some of those distressed methods would work well for these aged pages. If you have any methods or tips to share on how you achieve this deckled edge look, I would love to know it in the comments below, or if you want to share a picture with me from a project, share it with me on my social links. You may see some book projects in the future using this technique on the pages, so if you don't want to miss any of those, make sure you are subscribed, and even if you are already subscribed, hit that bell icon so you can be the first to get notified every time I upload a new video. You can support more content through my Patreon and YouTube memberships. I will include those links down below. And if you want to jump into a playlist full of bookbinding substitutes, supplies, and tips, I have that right here. You can also find that down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.